It is 11 o'clock on the dot. <laughs> just kidding. We're not going to sing for you guys. Um, <laughs> but I just kind of like, I, I decided today that instead of me introducing our lovely guests, I was going to let them introduce themselves. But do we want to do the mix up where y'all introduce each other? I mean, it's up to Brittany. I'm going to, I'm going to defer to her. This was her idea. <laughs> Yes, why not? It's Wednesday. Let's just go go right Let's for it. Let's do it. Welcome to the Art of Pricing. Today we're going to be talking about operations and revenue management and how these things go hand in hand on many different levels. So I'm going to let Brittany get started. Hey, um, so I'm going to introduce Miss Corinne. Um, first and foremost, I am so excited um, to be joined together with Talia and Corinne on this. I think it's so awesome. And I think one thing about Corinne, you know, she works with Breezeway and they're a lifesaver for me. Um, but one thing that I really loved about Corinne is just how lively she was from the day I met her. Always has a smile on her face. Um, and just her passion to help others is monumental in this industry. Um, through all of my millions of questions, requests, concerns, and feedback, um, you know, I think we've become personal friends through all of this. And if none of us have learned anything from COVID and the past craziness, it's that our industry is built on relationships. And so I love the Breezeway team, especially Corinne. Um, and with that, I'll pass the mic over to her. I think I have the chills. That was like the <laughs> best introduction. <laughs> I was like, I think I should just be like everything Brittany just said. Um, so uh, I'm super excited, actually. This is, you know, sometimes when you get like, oh, I've got to introduce someone, you're like, gosh, what am I going to say? Um, I probably could go on longer than Talia would like me to about <laughs> Brittany. Um, but Brittany is uh, incredible. I have known her. I would say since about 2017 and um, she is just, as she said about me, but I, I would say that this is, this is her expertise. She is so passionate about vacation rentals and hospitality. And um, she recently started her own business, Breathe Easy Rentals down in uh, Destin. And I've just been so excited to see um, your success and how, um, you know, how you've just really dug in and are really committed to making an incredible experience for all those folks who choose you to be their rental manager, but also for those guests. And I think Brittany is an exemplary, um, you know, person to see, to see, to understand how hospitality makes people have a great experience. I love the things that she does to make her guests feel special and to make them feel like, you know, they made the right choice with choosing her. And uh, I think she's just one of those people who goes above and beyond. So I, as she said, could not be more excited to do this with the two of you. That is amazing. You, you, you ladies are so great. I have to say, like, I mean, I, I you know, I, I know two of you pretty, you know, well, not as well as y'all know each other, but I'm an honor to call you guys a friend and my, my family from, you know, in here. And I'm so happy to have you guys here and how, you know, just lift each other's up. And, you know, Brit, I, I say like, when I've been saying passion a lot in our industry, right? Whether it's for operations or revenue management. I mean, I think that when we say passion, um, the two of you, the, your names and how you work with people in the industry, passion kind of goes hand in hand. I and mean, when we talk about Brittany's guests and her owners, what about all the people she helps on Facebook chat? Oh, all the brand new property managers. I'm constantly like, I'll see it at night and I'll be like, I should respond to this. And then Brittany responds. I'm like, Brittany, you should go to sleep. I don't know. I feel like, and Brittany, you are the energizer bunny. You, I don't know how you have so many hours in your day, but you do more than I could. You do more in a day than I could probably do in a week in most instances. So you're totally right. Like you are not only going above and beyond for your guests and your owners, but for the industry and those the industry as a whole. It's so impressive. It, it is great. And, you know, I, I just love this. I look just, it's, I, I could talk forever just about us. Uh, like I'm hugging myself. <laughs> I wish it was you guys, but <laughs> so today we're talking about operations and revenue management. I mean, as we know, in Art of Pricing, we talk about everything revenue management because everything is revenue management, which is in there. So we did um, start with, uh, I feel like I have put you guys on the spot more than I do often, but that's just because I know you have the good answers that are going to come with it. But we defined operations and Corinne, can you remember how you defined operations for me yesterday? I mean, probably not as well as it came out the first time, but I think this is a really big, a really key question to ask. Like, 
everybody's interpretation of this is different. To me, the way that I think about operations is that it's everything that happens from when a guest checks out to when a guest checks in to make sure that that home is clean, that it's well-maintained, that it's well-stocked, that it is safe. Um, and to make sure that the new guest is coming into a property. Someone said this on our, our conference, right? That they are the only person who has ever stayed in. And I think that that is the oh. mindset that everyone has. So it's, it's all of the things that as professionals in the vacation rental industry, we do to make sure that every guest that checks in feels like they are the first person to be in that property. I love, you know, I think that was better than your description yesterday. Um, so I actually like typed down most of what you said yesterday. I was like, <laughs> she's going, she's got this. Um, I really like the way that you said that because, you know, I, I never thought about it. Not, we're creating memories and obviously people know that someone has stayed in this property before. But I, I get what you're saying where I, I, there's very rarely that there's seldom that I walk into a property and I say, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what the last people thought in here. Like I, I do walk into it. I'm like, this is mine. This is my vacation. This is all about me and my family. And I don't ever think about what was there. Now, if I open a fridge and there's stuff in the fridge or the freezer, or there was something left behind or something that cleaned then those start start, to start coming to me, right? Yeah. Like what's happening? Um, Brittany, you know, I'm not going to make you define operations after Corinne's uh, uh, beautiful <laughs> one, but what I did want to go you is like, as a property manager, right? What are the top three things that come to mind that like go hand in hand when you're thinking about like operations and revenue management? Uh, I think the most important would be processes, systems, policies. Um, without those th three things, you don't have operations and you're just flying by the seat of your pants. Um, you know, so those, th those all go hand in hand. And then with that, define, well, defining operations in a sense um, is having good record keeping and then also efficiency. So between all three of those different things, if you have good processes and systems and policies in place, you can be efficient and inefficiency also comes being able to go back to data and looking at your previous records. Yeah, totally. Uh, Brittany, did we lose you? you on and that will okay. help. <laughs> so we lost you for a second, but you're good. Um, on there, you know, it's funny talking about being efficient and not flying by the seat of your pants. That is the exact same thing Brittany told me yesterday. So this is obviously where operations is very top of mind, like on, on your mind every day of what you, what you were doing. I mean, you literally said systems and processes, efficiency and record keeping. like I'm reading it uh, <laughs> on there. I wanted to ask you though, and it's kind of a little different yesterday. Like you, you know, you started your own business in the last year. Um, COVID or no COVID, however crazy that might have seemed in your head. But whenever it comes to like operations, um, do you feel, do you think about it differently now that you own your own business than when you actually work for someone else? Yeah. Um, <laughs> knowing it's my dollar that goes to support my family and my food table. Um, I hate to say it, but it creates this sense of responsibility um, even more than I had. I mean, I always managed and worked like I owned a, owned a business. Like I, my parents just always taught me act like you own it, you know? So, I mean, I've always had that, but more than ever having a good operation is what I need to be able to succeed and, and be able to grow. And it's also as the owner and operator, you know, I've been in these properties firsthand. I've scrubbed the toilets. I've been the maintenance woman, um, you know, doing different things. And that has taught me different things. Like I've learned so much in six months, even though I've been in the industry for 10 years doing it, I've learned so much in six months that I literally have had to take my operations and fine tune them. And it's been cool to take the time to figure out what I did wrong, where did I mess up? Because I know what I want to do. I know what I want the final product to look like and experience to be. I'm messing it up. I want to fix those. So that way, as I hire new, they kind of can get in that mentality and you know, to decrease if inefficiencies as much as possible, because of course, inefficiencies is, is at the end of the day, what affects your bottom line revenue wise. Mm -hmm. 
Totally, totally. And I think that, you know, I, I was going to jump there right away, but I think that I want to ask one other question before we jump to the inefficiency, inefficiency and um, how it, you know, affects your, your bottom line. Uh, you know, Corinne, do you feel like, um, you know, what are some, I don't know how, how I'm trying to make sure the, the best way I wanted to explain this. So the way that Brittany's saying, like, it's completely different, like now that she owns the company before, obviously we know, we know that you were still like a powerhouse, you know, at your old company um, and everything. Oh, but how, you know, what are ways that maybe owners can articulate or set goals or show their individual contributors how they feel to make them hold some responsibility over these, over, over operations, right? And make it feel more like, they're taking control and having autonomy on what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I I think that like, you know, Brittany touched on so many good points there, but I, I think Talia to your point, right? Like there's this mindset and it's an incorrect one for sure, right? Of I'm just a housekeeper. I'm just a maintenance person. I'm just a, va- you know, a vacation rental manager, owner, whatever it is. Like every, I think that the biggest thing that we can do as an industry is to empower everybody to understand the value that their work brings to the company. Because to Brittany's point, like it is her business. And at the end of the day, the bottom line is that she wants to make the maximize her revenue and she wants to maximize the efficiency of the business. But if everybody doesn't understand the value that their job brings to the company as a whole, mm-hmm. then, then they don't have that sense of pride. I just did a, um, a webinar last week that talked about like, you know, this is your brand. These folks that are coming in and are working for you and are representing you in your um, in your homes and that are maybe the only people that interact with your guests represent your company. So whether that's somebody that works for Brittany or works with Brittany or Brittany, the same expectation is there, right? They don't mm-hmm. know who, who Brittany is or who Brittany is not. And so I think empowering your staff to understand the impact that they have and the value that they bring is immensely important to getting that efficiency that you need and taking that sort of brand ownership and, and sort of Mm -hmm. attitude. And I think that it's important for all of us in this industry, in our industry, whether you're new or old or you know, the older people, especially where you, we assume everyone has the same passion we have. We assume when you come to do this job that you know every aspect of everything in vacation rentals, which is like impossible to do. Um, there's just so many different things that are there. So you're, you know, even on the vendor side, Corinne, I'm sure you can say this too. Like we get new people that come in uh, on different areas and you're like, you, you realize like a month later that maybe I didn't show them the value or maybe I didn't, you know, you have to make sure the importance of the training and what it means means to you see how you feel and let them answer questions because you can't no one's going to do anything the way you want it to be done but how do you train them and support them to become that way they don't just walk in being a co-owner of your company <laughs> you know exactly. it's crazy exactly, right for me yeah. like you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so I wanted to go back to you know I think we could talk about We'll do another one another day on how to uh, motivate and train your employees to feel like the responsibility you feel um, on there. But then again, right, you want your employees to sleep too. So I don't know, we're back and forth contradicting myself on that one. <laughs> um, but do you want them to sleep? Do, but do you want them? <laughs> you need some night owls, right? So they can do handle the midnight thing. Yeah. Um, but with efficiency, we were talking about how efficiency is like one of the main things, you know, to, that can hurt your bottom line, right? Now, you know, one example I really wanted to talk about and some, some tangible ad- examples is we were talking about how like Breezeway and companies like that, um, how you can like having the, knowing the maintenance cycle of what you're maintaining in the house can help you to save money later. And Brittany, I yeah. think that you had some really good use cases and Corinne, whoever wants to take that one. Well, also, I can talk about it from like a, from a kind of jumping off of something that Brittany had said before, right? Which mm-hmm. is that she knows how she wants things to be done and how she expects them to be done to represent Breathe Easy. And I think that, you know, when we start to look at how do we ensure that our team knows about that? It's about communicating it. It's about giving them the tools so that they can successfully deliver on the same thing that, that the same way that Brittany would do. And so I mm-hmm. think One of the things that we see a lot is, you know, making sure that people are doing preventative maintenance, making sure that they're holding their housekeepers and their inspectors accountable for reporting issues that happen because someone will report them. You want them to be Mm -hmm. the people that you pay to do that. 
Not and, your day. And Jenny, that's what you were saying, right? Like, I, I don't want to steal your thunder because I thought that was so smart, right? It's the people you pay is who you want to do that yeah. and find those Not issues. Not the people who pay you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's super important to make sure that, that they're understanding how they should be reporting issues to you because the preventative work reduces the opportunity and the, the probability that something goes wrong in the middle of a guest stay. That's just like, you know, preventative work, right? Like, you know, like having like monthly, monthly checking, check monthly check-ins or inspections on your appliances, right? And documenting that those check-ins happen. So that if, you know, you have like on the 15th of every month, somebody goes in and they check the refrigerators or something, or they check that the mattress pads are there. They check that something's there. And then you get a, you get um, a complaint or on the 18th or 19th that it's not that the, the fridge broke. What happened? An owner asking you the fridge broke. What happened? Well, I don't know. We've, we've been checking it right like so it was working on the 15th I think we need to put a maintenance order in so you you're seeing these things before anybody else does and essentially uh you know making sure that your inspectors and your cleaners are notating anything that they don't see all the time you don't know what you don't know right well and I think that when you're documenting the work that you're doing right like even if it is like we're repairing something right I, I'm this I use this example from a client all the time right where they were going in and they had constantly repaired it. And eventually the owner said to the property manager, haven't we fixed this four times? And the property manager was like, well, John fixed it the first time, Sally the second time, Jim the next time. They were looking at it holistically to say, hey, we just continue to get these complaints. It's costing us money. Guests is an ex having a great experience. And now we've, we've fixed it four times when we probably could have saved money to have just replaced it. So mm -hmm. it's not only about documenting it, but it's about using, and Brittany said this earlier, right? Using the data that you have to make smart decisions. Right, exactly. Data, data. I mean, great segue, Corinne. You might have just been in my head. Uh, I was going to say like, that's the thing, like, you know, it, it all comes back to data and how can we, it's crazy. You're like, you know, how can up, you know, operations and cleaning and checking these things come to data that's going to help our help, help make decisions that are going to help our bottom line. Uh, Brittany, what kind of data do you look at um, within Breezeway or wherever you're looking at that to help you make decisions, you know, on your operations? Um, yeah. So I look at everything in Breezeway, you know, from time. Um, first off, I, I know how long it takes to clean. I know how long it takes to inspect. Um, we walk every single property upon departure before cleaners even get there. Um, so all those different things help us. And, you know, seeing kind of like to current point, like going, being able to go into a system to see, okay, we've repaired this, you know, X many times, maybe next time, you know, I can put it on the owner's radar of, Hey, it may not be worth, you know, repairing again. Um, you know, and even like a, a real example from the other week, I had a guest who came in and they had a sofa sleeper that wasn't working. They weren't worried about it. So we checked it upon their departure. And all it was, was just that the mechanics were, if you want to say squeaky, we needed to spray WD-40 on it. And I was like, oh my gosh, we should do this in all of the properties. So that weekend, we all carried around WD-40 and we all went and sprayed all the um, sofa sleeper mechanics. So that way, going to operations and revenue management, we, we see that, okay, this is a problem. Let's get ahead of it, be proactive. So now I'm not going to have to refund a guest in a week because they can't get the sofa sleeper open on their first night mm -hmm. um, because now I was ahead of it. I saw that, you know, I mean, I just saw yeah. it took one time for me on this one, but, you know, same thing. If we see, um, I think we talked the other day about shower liners. Like mm -hmm. we started to see that shower liners for some reason are getting super gross all of a sudden. Um, so it's like, okay, now once a month, we're just going to kind of go ahead and have shower liners on us and plan to rotate them in the properties or sooner if they need it. So um, in preparation of this podcast, I actually wrote this question down, which I think is like a little uh, thought provoking thing, um, you know, for property managers and well, mainly for property managers, but you know, my thing is how many times have you not been able to provide an answer to an owner or a guest and what has that cost you? Brittany and, has the best questions. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm like, where can we put this question and get answers? Um, we should make a survey out of this because you're right. You say like how many, in that way, it's being aware, right? It's showing that, that awareness. And if any, I mean, operations, it's helping you to be proactive 
proactive. That is helping you be proactive to stop negative guest, guest experiences, right? Like somebody comes in, sees a, a nasty shower liner. Like that's not a good experience. They, they know somebody's been there before, right? But also like, it's great that your, your, your guests felt that they could tell you about the squeaky sofa, but it wasn't affecting them. So it wasn't a bad guest review, but you're like, okay, today is not a get, bad guest review, but it could be in the future. Let's be proactive and fix all this now. Um, and now you, you have that, like that you, you, you've done that and you can, you can document that in everything. Um, and that, you know, that, that, that I would really like to hear answers from P property managers. So if you're listening, like email us and let us know, like, you know, what, how many, in, if you, if you're like me and I've never thought about it, I want to know that. Well, I, I think know most it. people haven't, right? Property management isn't a, an industry where people are just sitting around thinking about like, hmm, I wonder what I don't know, right? I wonder, what, I don't I wonder know. what I should be oh. thinking about next. Like that's the problem Look, in this industry is everyone's so busy. You don't have the time not to think, to think about those things. That's what I'm telling you. Brittany is superhuman because she somehow manages to run this awesome company, be so helpful to everyone in the industry and think of these things. But I think, I think one of the things that, you know, Brittany, that highlights to me too, is that like, when you start to think about like, you know, we, we talk a lot about like how guest expectations are about cleanings and how that works, right? There are very, I would assume now that we're like, you know, a little further out from COVID, there are fewer and fewer questions coming in about like, what's your cleaning protocol? How are you doing that? Because the consumer, the traveler has this expectation mm -hmm. that it's just going to be clean. Fun that it's just being done. And so when they walk into that unit, not any of your units, Brittany, but when they walk into that unit and there's a dirty shower curtain, that immediately starts that question of like, well, what else is dirty? What else do I need to look at? And so that is that impact where something as simple as replacing a shower curtain or shower liner, right? Like it has a huge direct revenue impact. It could have a huge direct revenue impact on that stay mm -hmm. and future stays too, right? Because if they're like, oh gosh, that place was nasty. Like we're not gonna wanna go back there. They're not there, gonna be right? guests, right? So. And it's not always just your brand that you're hurting, right? You could be hurting your local area. Like, I know you're like, oh, they're one place. They'll think people sometimes don't wanna think outside the box, right? They're like, this is this was my experience here. Do I wanna come back? You know, you have a one dish at a restaurant that mean that everything else is terrible too. <laughs> you, know, yeah. Yeah. you have to have that, that brand that's, that's in there. And, you know, do we feel like, I mean, this is crazy, right? But not crazy. I feel like COVID in a way has made, well, obviously made cleaning way better in every industry. I probably, I think, you know, bars, anything that's out there. But do you think COVID has maybe even for our industry made people become operationally better with tracking things and seeing these things? Oh, Brittany has, Brittany seems to have a different answer than I was going to go with. Let's let her go. Brittany, tell me, tell me, tell us. <laughs> um, my very blunt response is I think it's made some people better and it's made some people worse. It, I think it separated the industry of the yeah. true professionals, the true people who want a good brand and are in this for the long run. And then I hate to say, but for the people who don't care or don't have that same vision or don't can't do it they're they're hurting right. they're hurting really bad so what i think it? it's honestly it's good i just think it's created more of a separation right. between professionals who are in it and and ready to play game and those who aren't right and this i mean what this is that you know the greatest example the example the quality versus quantity right like if you knew quality is worth it and you should spend time on things that are going to generate higher quality 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 experiences are revenue versus quantity like oh like I my, my team doesn't have enough time at hours in the day to just go walk through a property after every check-in or go put WD-40 or go you know focus on these guests like you are seeing those differences um in everything and I mean whether or not you know and when we're saying professional versus not professional this could still be owner and home I mean you can be a professional homeowner right like so we want to this is you can be a professional in this industry and be an owner or an operator right yeah. it's we need to tr everyone treats industry as a whole no matter who you are uh, well, but we I need to do the, justice the the guests don't know the difference in, in many instances no, right they, do not. they they may may believe in some instances right because I think to your point there are there are a lot of people at all size that 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 can do a good job but i wholeheartedly agree i i i changed my answer of what i was gonna say because i think Brittany brings up a really good point i was gonna be like of course it did 
but I think I think I would I would echo Brittany's sentiment in that it did for the people who wanted it to. And yep. I think that, you know, I think I look at that, you know, I'm going to take your glass half full approach here. There is an opportunity for new entry entrants into the industry or people who are just getting started. This is a challenge to them, right? To say, you guys need to take this seriously. You need to look at how you can professionalize your business, how there are plenty of homes out there, mm-hmm. right? I don't think that, you know, well, there's a limit, there's a finite amount, but right now <laughs> there's plenty of homes, right? Where people who Supply want- might be a really low, but you know, <laughs> they're homes. Um, but you know, there are, there is, that's not the problem is not getting a homeowner. It's how you manage that homeowner's house, how you manage the experience. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is a, an opportunity for those small people who maybe were brand new, who thought like, oh, I can do this. It's not that big of a deal to understand the true impact and, and the true responsibility of, mm-hmm. of being a professional in this space. And you know, it's what I say all the time, it's managing your owner expectations and whether you are the owner or the manager is the owner. And I'd say like, uh, my dad and I are building a container home in his backyard and I'm approaching this, like I've never managed a property on my own before and being for 10 years, worked with thousands of people and, you know, my life is vacation rentals. I've never managed it. And like with this one container home in his backyard, I mean, we are approaching this as if I'm starting my own property management business. And there would be no other way to think about that. Like to me, like, it's like, it needs yeah, to, you would think, right. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to go and just, Brittany, you know, like, let me tell you, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to half ass it, but you know, like, I want to, I want my, I want people to have a great experience in the area, uh, you know, and if they don't have this good experience, you know, then maybe I'll never get a second container out of my dad. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. But you know, just it's creating good experiences. Um, we have three minutes left, and I know we could talk forever. But one thing I wanted to talk about before we got final thoughts was the importance of documenting everything. Because even if you're a person that remembers everything, doesn't mean that everyone else around you is a person that remembers everything. I am still mind blown whenever I go to conferences with some people who, who I just won't name. Uh, but you, <laughs> I have so many different names in my head that I could say right now where you go and they're like, I'm going to do this one. I'll remember this. I'll do this. And they just, it's not that they don't do, they, they don't ever write it down. I'm like, how do you remember all to do all this stuff? Like if I'm not writing stuff down, you usually see me at a conference, like taking a picture, writing on a business card, slacking myself to remind myself, like, I can't remember to do things. That's just who I am. Um, so Brittany that, you know, I think what operationally documenting everything within Breezeway stuff is helping you. Uh, you know, helping with your employees, especially part-time versus full-time, right? It is. Um, so I like to joke around and say that being a property manager, you should also be a psychologist um, because you, sh- and I say that funny, but seriously too, in dealing with so many emotions and people, um, but your team, everybody learns differently. Some are visual learners, some are task oriented. Um, and so I've known that over the years, but, you know, in starting Breathe Easy, I had to sit down and say, okay, I know where I want to take this. I know what my goal is with this company. I will grow. So how am I going to train my staff to be mini Britneys? Um, and I'm a person where I remember everything. Um, I'm actually really, really bad with checklists. Like I do number one and then number 10 and then number two. You're completely opposite. Five. Yeah. Um, but I. At, like my team um excellent but they are very task oriented um and they need that but again I, I knew that going into it so I mean that's helped me you know with my team like being able to onboard them I've been able to onboard them in half the time because I have a touch day training guide that I created so there's pictures and everything listed out that they need and as they ask questions we put stuff in the training guides so they can always refer to it they know that their assignments are all going to be in breezeway and all I have to do is just tell them the order and they can see everything in there. You know, instead of me just remembering everything that has to get done on a Saturday and trying to message that out to have these processes in place and they're very, um, very, very specific. So that way my team is be where it goes, how to get in and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's helped me to hire staff, to retain staff, they see that I'm very organized. Some people can't handle it and that's fine, but those who like an organized um, operation really enjoy it. And so now I'm not having to rehire and rehire all these people because I can get quality employees and 
what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it hits the bottom line at the end of the day. Wait, there's, there's no harm in being organized, right? I mean, the people who aren't organized, they're not going to be mad that you organize. And the people that are organized are going to love that you're organized. So it's kind of, you know, you know like that's going to, that's going to work out. And it, like we, you know, we talked about multiple times, like if you don't have a process or a written down training or process of how to handle something, like you were said, is that means you have to stop everything you're doing in every moment to treat, train somebody on how to do that. That your time, your time is valuable and it takes longer to do, right? So at the end of the day, not being, you know, not having that preparation is going to, you know, take more hours in the day, which costs money, uh, like we all know. Uh, so it's 1130. Let's get some final thoughts, Corinne. Oh, um, I mean, I just think that like, you know, I think I can't agree more with Brittany that documentation makes everything easier down the line, whether you're just starting out, whether you're starting a new pro a new process or something that you're doing within your, your organization. Um, the biggest thing that you can do to help yourself now when you have the time to do it is to document, to make sure that you set a good SOP on how you want your business to run and then communicate that with your team, right? We cannot expect that everyone will remember and will do everything the way that we want them to do if we don't provide them the tools to help them be successful. So I think, um, you know, there's a huge opportunity and I think operations hits your bottom line in more ways than we could even begin to touch on in, in 30 minutes. But I would say that that's probably the biggest one, right? Make mm -hmm. sure that you're documenting and sharing, um, the expectations across your team. I love that. And, uh, uh, Bernie, do you have anything else that you want to share? I kind of had a loaded question for you at the end, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I just want to go back to one thing Corinne said earlier. Um, I think we all know none of us are sitting around at our computer desk just waiting on, you know, what's going to happen today. Um, so having your processes and your systems in place, they're planned for the worst. Go ahead and be emergency and have things set up so that way when the stuff hits the fan like you know it's going to do in an unexpected way every time you have yourself organized things place for your um you can handle that crazy stuff and that at the end of the day when you can respond to an owner and say I did this I did that when you can communicate with the guests and tell them what you're doing to help them it will absolutely 100% help your revenue it is less money that you have to give back because the guests and the owners feel like you're on top of it where you give the most money back is when you don't know what's going on when you can't answer the questions when you're uncommunicative um, so I just implore everybody to sit down at some point and say, how do I start creating these efficiencies and make sure that I have processes and, and stuff in place. So when the emergencies hit, our team's ready and able to handle whatever comes our way. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I mean, and such great information. I have like a million ideas of resources that maybe we can create to help people um, be uh, more like Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> we can all be mini Britney. We can all be mini Britneys. Um, so thank you ladies so much for joining me today. This was a pleasure. I can't wait to see both of you in person again. I know I just seen you guys in the past month, but I want us all together um, again, more than a day. Um, next week, Art of Pricing, I will be out of town on the beach, but Cliff will be here talking about regulations and how they can impact your revenue. So don't miss that out. And then the next week, the reason I'm telling you about you guys about this now is we really talked about today a lot about owner expectations um, and setting that. Um, we are going to have um, uh, JL from Parley Vu and a property manager where we're going to talk about owner and management agreements and how to set expectations from the top down. Um, so that should be a really exciting one too. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, Corinne or Brittany. Um, we would love to help you out however we can. Have a great day, guys. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.